Hi, uh, this is Calvin Cox. It's uh, Wednesday, July 18th, uh, 2012. It's 9.13 p.m. in the evening. Um, I wanted to give you a, a talk uh, again about something I spoke about last week about uh, particle accelerators and breaking offshoot particles down into other particles, even smaller, by hitting them again. Uh, I did a little bit of research in uh, this last few days, and um, I, after reading more, I really do believe that the idea that I'm proposing is actually very doable. It would save a lot of money. Uh, you could probably take some linear accelerators, uh, one linear accelerator here and another linear accelerator, and put them together in uh, one setting, uh, lined up against each other, and <clears throat> probably make scientific history simply, first of all, you'd save a huge amount of money, you've already got the machines, if you can break them apart and transport them quickly and reset them back up and align them against each other, um, you could save a lot of money and, and probably do that fairly quickly rather than ordering all new stuff. Anyway, the idea being that you could uh, make scientific history uh, just by simply utilizing the machines differently. Um, let's try and get to the point here pretty quick. Uh, I would call it the double double smash atom smasher. Okay, uh, That's where um, you accelerate a particle into a target piece, a piece of aluminum or metal or something, and when the uh, accelerated particle hits the target, there's all different kinds of particle collisions. Uh, this is just one of the kinds, okay? Uh, you have a physical target that you run accelerated particles against, and it blasts out different size particles that shoot out of this material when it's hit by this accelerated beam of other particles, okay? Now, if you leave these alone, the whole crux of this whole idea is that if you leave these particles alone and they just shoot out, what happens is they rejoin. They go shoot off and rejoin into solid matter again. Okay? And at that point, <laughs> you can't study them anymore. You can't do anything with them. So the idea is to, after they shoot out, immediately another beam would be coming this way and hopefully hit one of these and break it apart into even smaller parts, okay? That's where the bonanza is going to come in, okay? That's where whoever does this first is going to be the biggest top dog for the longest time. Bragging rights, you will not fucking believe. You, you can't believe in all of particle physics, okay? Subatomic particle physics. No one will be able to. to <laughs> this, this will bust it so loose. You would. You can't imagine. Okay. There's 36 known particles now. I think there's like another 24 uh, theorized particles. More than 24 are going to come from this. Okay. This is this is going to open up the whole new window on the new physics that's just around the corner. Okay, all kinds of crazy shit is going to come from doing this first. All right. Because when one of these gets busted apart, and e even to the little smaller particles, you know, you're just going to see all different kinds of tracks and traces, different uh, velocities and charges, electrical charges, uh, magnetic charges. You're going to see all kinds of different particles coming out of these. Okay. Uh, the reason these break apart, and typically no one is seeing new particles, is because each one of these has a tendency to clump together. Okay, it uh, it it has a natural tendency to clump together. Okay, and so when you you break them apart, uh, in other words, even the Large Hadron Collider, when they ramp that sucker up to the highest energy levels possible for it 
to, to operate at. The maximum designated power it's designed to handle. It's still not going to reveal as much as using the idea I'm proposing would reveal more, much, much, ten times more, way quicker with a lot less effort and money spent. Okay? And the reason I say that is because these things that are currently being produced have a natural affinity to clump together. And the only way to break them apart is to hit them again and bust them apart before they combine. So if you keep using the standard method, it just keeps shooting some at a higher and higher and higher energy, they still have a tendency to clump, period, you know. So <laughs> you, you ramp it up to the maximum large hadron collider to the maximum energy possible, and it's still only going to produce so much more new results, not that much. But smashing these again from another direction will have a tendency, these ones that tend to clump together, will finally break them apart and reveal the whole new world of the whole new world of new particles that have yet to be found. Okay. Anyway, so here's the, the same thing again. It's just a uh, beam shoots here to the target, shoots apart, and then another beam hits one of these and busts it down into the smaller particles. I'm excited about this. I I don't know when anybody would ever do it. Uh, I think it could be done pretty easily. There's a list of a uh, whole list here in North America of particle accelerators. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There's about thirty just in North America I'm sure a couple of them could be linear ones they could figure to take two of them put them together make a whole nother accelerator um, I was gonna say a list of particles here yeah I was thinking about this the other night and all I conclude can conclude is that when the first double smash atom smasher becomes operational and finally begins to collect data, it's going to rewrite particle physics and many more theories are going to be written and rewritten. It's way more complex than anyone thinks, meaning that, you know, the structure of the atom and everything about us, um, it's hugely complex. Uh, and when this happens, um, people realize how much more complex it is. I'm sure that there's well over 100 particles. Um, and the only way to do it is, is bust them apart again, like I was talking about. That's my take on it. And uh, it would be very interesting to be alive when that new physics emerges. Uh, what it would tell us and the math involved as the physicists started working the math involved uh, would probably come up with some pretty incredible stuff.